Made her to fuck some shit up? It shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone that Fallout 4 is my game of 2015. I started producing Fallout Friday, a weekly news and rumours show about the game, over six months ago. Then, a week before launch, I was lucky enough to get my hands on a review copy of the game, and over the course of the next four days, I crammed in over 36 hours worth of gameplay. Also, I could create a bunch of video features and tutorials for this channel in time for the lift of the review embargo. So, to say I've been pretty absorbed by the whole thing is a bit of an understatement. But instead of packing it all away when the dust had settled like a sane person might have, right now I'm currently 54 hours into my second playthrough of the game, a number that I'm sure will have increased by the time this video is published. So the real question then shouldn't be why Fallout 4 is my game of the year, but rather why the hell I'm not sick to the back teeth of it yet. Well, you see, my second playthrough is happening as a live-streamed video series over on my personal YouTube channel, Platform32, and it's allowed me to play the game in a way I never would have done had I continued playing it through in private. Subscribers to this channel may have seen the first three parts of my Fallout 4 stream series. I started it here on Eurogamer the day before the game launched, but then moved it across to Platform32 a few days later. The thing that made this playthrough so interesting, though, was the fact that I started with a set of self-imposed rules. Rules that could quite possibly have made the whole experience a nightmare. Firstly, I asked my fellow video producer Johnny Chiadini to design my character's stats and name, which, as you can see, turned out to be a very bad idea indeed. And then I asked the viewers to choose the sex of my avatar. I had to do whatever they all said, and that's why I ended up with a female character called Henry J. Buttminster. Now, I suspect Johnny created Henry J's build in an effort to troll me, or at least make my time in Boston rather difficult. You see, Henry J was very agile and perceptive, but Johnny made sure her strength, charisma and intelligence stats were almost non-existent. This was in complete contrast to how I usually play Fallout games. Normally, I'll build a tank. A damaged sponge with enough strength to carry a huge arsenal of weaponry in his pockets while still having plenty of room left over for loot. To do this, I'd pile my stats into endurance and strength, but also put an emphasis on intelligence and perception. That way I could hone my lockpicking and hacking skills to maximise the potential for plunder. On the flip side, Henry J was weak. Weak and dumb. Like, really dumb. Her intelligence was so low that she had no hacking skills at all. Plus, her lack of strength meant I had to be really conservative about what I chose to carry, rather than just stuffing whatever I wanted into my pockets like I normally did. Basically, I was being forced to learn a completely new playstyle. <laughs> It was the second rule that really shaped the way I played the game, though, and after a while it turned a potentially rubbish character into one of the deadliest stealth assassins in Boston. Holy shit! The idea for the second rule was simple. Only the viewers could choose what perks I spent my points on. That way I was never in control of Henry J's build, only her actions. So whenever I leveled up I'd ask the viewers to type potential perks into the chat and I'd choose the first one I saw at random, whether it was a big help or turned out to be utterly useless. There have of course been some dodgy perks chosen, ones that were obviously meant to waste a skill point, but that's part of the danger and fun of putting the life of your character in the hands of your audience. However, during the course of the series the community have really pulled together, and as a combined force they've managed to create a character whom I really enjoy playing as. There's another one around. Oh, it doesn't know I'm here yet. I'm too stealthy! That's in your face. Oh, yeah, boy. Nice.
Her stealth skills are amazing. Whenever she's undetected, she'll deal 2.3 times damage on her unsuspecting targets. Combine that with a headshot or two, and you've got an incredibly satisfying way of cleaning out a room full of hostiles. Which has been a real novelty for me, considering I never play stealth in Fallout games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. Holy shit, this is, this is so much easier than the first time I played this. The viewers even worked together to slowly increase her intelligence so she could finally gain some much needed hacker perks, which, to be honest, made me very happy indeed. Handing over control of Henry J's stats has given the game a whole new lease of life for me, and as a result it's made my audience much more involved in the characters and their adventures, even if they are a little bit glitchy at times. Thanks to the stream series, my second playthrough of Fallout 4 has become much more than just my game. It's become my community's game, and thanks to the random way in which they're levelling up my perks, I'm often pushed out of my comfort zone, and in turn am constantly being surprised by new things I missed the first time around. That's why I'm nowhere near sick of Fallout 4 yet, and that's why it's my game of 2015. Let's go, boy. Hey, this is Chris from Eurogamer, and my favourite game of 2015 sneaked its way out of early access back in May, which feels like a long time ago now, doesn't it? Back then, surprise Shemu guy had yet to be surprised, and Kojima, well, he didn't have a beard yet. Gosh, how little we all knew.